This well-tended patch of land not far from the city's core is one of Vancouver's oldest and one of Canada's largest community gardens. I fell in love with the place as soon as I walked in. I'd never seen a community garden that looked quite like this one does. These three acres were formed over 30 years ago. Before it ever saw the hint of a flower bed or tomato seed, it was a landfill. Frustrated with a lack of green space in much of East Vancouver, in 1991, people started clearing the land and creating plots. Oliver Kalhammer was the first. There were also areas like the area that eventually became Cottonwood Gardens, which had been used as dump sites. So this is a place where contractors and uh, just people would just abandon their cars or, or dump like a load of sheet raw. So the city was actually run very differently depending on what neighborhood you were living in. So people uh, in my neighborhood, in the Grandview Woodlands and the downtown east side, uh, were really frustrated with the sort of what we called um, recreational apartheid. What began slowly grew quickly. They called themselves guerrilla gardeners. The city got on board. Kalimer says people from all corners of the earth connected in the garden. Everyone had their own food that they grew. Uh, so people were trading, you know, artichokes for bok choy or, you know, trading seeds and trading recipes. Getting space in a community garden in Metro Vancouver these days is not easy. Most have a wait list. But there are other ways to enjoy food grown close to home sometimes very close. Are you picking up a share? Yeah, for Neil Power. Perfect, thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Did he tell you how it works? Um, yes, I think I pick one thing from each section, is that right? Yeah, so everything you get is written on that chalkboard. Oh, right. or, and then you can just follow right. it along right to left, and if you have any questions, let us know. Okay, thank you so yeah. much, it looks beautiful. Like the Gorilla Gardeners from 30 years ago, City Beat Farms is reimagining where food can grow and how people can get their hands on it except they made it their business. We use people's front yards mostly, some of them are backyards. The arrangement is that we do all the farming in the yard. Fruit and vegetables instead of grass, fresh off the vine and sold in the community. So after they harvest, the fruits, flowers and the vegetables, like these beets, are available for weekly pickup by their customers. It's all about building community. We saw, you know, in COVID and in the floods, for food security, it really helps to be able to get the food from nearby so the supply chains are as simple as possible and things aren't getting interrupted. If we had a food system that had a lot more really small, like micro and, and small scale farms, that kind of food system would be a lot more secure. Morning Glory is one of the one of the biggest invasive species that we deal with. But if you don't have a yard to call your own, there's another way to get dirt under your fingernails. Marie-Pierre Bilodeau started ReFarmers to promote environmental protection and biodiversity. Amongst many projects, they garden in traffic circles with the endorsement of the city of Vancouver. Just let them know where you'd like to gorilla garden and they actually encourage you to rewild or you know plant pollinators in in city spaces. She clears invasive plants like morning glory to make way for pollinators like fireweed and California poppies. Pollinators are extremely necessary for any gardener or food plants so like bees and even butterflies. Wildflowers would just make it such a habitat for pollinators. Reimagining and reclaiming what can be a garden for people and the food they grow. The gorilla gardeners at Cottonwood would be proud. Melody Jacobson, CBC News, Vancouver.